Marxism teaches us that um, in the capitalist uh, mode of production, it is workers who produce commodities, and that is the beating heart of the system. But social reproduction theory asks the question that if workers produce commodities, who produces the worker? So social reproduction theory is really about the social processes that produce labor power as a commodity and how those social processes of the production of labor power is connected to and imbricated with the social processes that produce the commodity. So if we say, let's say that the worker goes into her workplace at 7 in the morning and leaves her workplace at 5 p.m. in the afternoon, then social reproduction theory is the narrative of what happens before 7 a.m. and what happens after 5 p.m. So to go back to the question of who produces the worker, the first answer to this is fairly obvious, that it is because the worker had a bed to sleep in and a house where she had the bed and food to eat, that her labor power was regenerated uh, enough for her to go back to work at 7 a.m. in the morning. Similarly, after 5 p.m., uh, she came home and that process starts again. She also perhaps has support from uh, friends or family who provides psychical support to her because she's had a rough day at work perhaps, for her to be able to go back the next morning. So that is about social reproduction uh, taking place within the private sphere, within the ambit of the family. So that part of the answer is fairly straightforward. The other um, subsection to the answer of who produces the worker is social reproduction theory tells us that there is a direct biological reproduction of the working class, which happens uh, within the family through childbirth. Um, and um, that is one of the key ways in which the working class is reproduced. But of course, um, reproduction of the working class within the family is not the only way that um, the working class is um, reproduced within a social context. Immigration and slavery are two of the main ways in which people are forced into a nationally bounded site as the workforce. Before social reproduction theory um, sort of emerged, many feminists did acknowledge and did some wonderful creative work around um, privatized social reproduction. So domestic labor, etc., the work within the family were all really um, theorized and approached quite creatively before social reproduction theory. And many feminists actually think that the writ of social reproduction ends there within the family. So it's the family that needs to be theorized. But other social reproduction theorists, and I count myself amongst them, and that's what the book um, also tries to address, is we see the writ of social reproduction theory much wider than the family. So for instance, how is the working class reproduced is not just about the work that's done within the family, but what kind of access does this community have to water? Think about Flint, Michigan, or Detroit, where access to water was so violently um, um, affected by the class and race dimensions of that um, part of the country. Um, what kind of public parks do, do the working class children have access to? What kind of healthcare system uh, exists in this country that the working class can access? So those public functions, those public socialized services, uh, we argue in the book, are also crucial parts of the reproduction of the social reproduction of the working class. And this is where I think the book is very um, clear and kind of um, tries to 
think through these various social relations, the capitalist social relations that actually reproduce the working class. And the real lesson, I think, for us to um, have written this book and worked on this book, and I hope the real lesson for the next generation of thinkers and activists who approach social reproduction theory is that we understood that capitalism needs a stable set of social relations to reproduce itself. Okay? There has to be certain kinds of work discipline. There has to be certain kinds of political formations that allow capitalism to do this. Social reproduction theory taught us that at every moment that those social relations are forged by capitalism are also moments for potential interruption of those social relations. So every battle for housing, every battle for free access to health care, every battle for water, clean water, can also take the shape of and certainly has the potential and the seed for a wider anti-systemic struggle. And that's the real lesson that I think we drew from social reproduction theory and that we hope people will develop upon both in their scholarship but also on the streets.